We're back on the Transpontanera. We're headed to a hotel on the Pishheim River, about halfway back to Pocone. We stopped for some interesting birds. We've been down this road before, but we were in a hurry, so we see more this time. Hagina knows a grove of trees that are the home to this owl. And there's another that includes a favorite roost tree for this patu. Our driver really knows this road and at least every large pothole in it. We stopped to help an Australian with two flat tires. We walked the bridge to find the cause so we can avoid it. Here's the problem. A piece of rebar used to hold the bridge together has broken. We give the Australian and his two flat tires a lift to the hotel. Our home for the next two nights is the Pantanal Mato Grosso Hotel. It's located right on the Pishheim River. After lunch and time to unpack, we're out on the river. It's a lot smaller than the Cuyaba. Just as I remember from five years ago, there are a lot of kingfishers on this river. And I also remember how curious the otters were. But that's not all. There's iguana and lots of bird life in addition to the kingfishers. The forest comes right down to the river's edge and the vines dip into the water. The water undercuts the trees on the bank and eventually they fall into the water. A large thunderhead is formed in the direction of Pecone. Sherry's always on the lookout for snakes. This one's checking out the kingfisher nests and the holes along the riverbank. It's the longest of the indigo snake family, up to 10 feet. As the sun goes down lower, the thunderhead starts to color. The cormorants find their roost trees for the night. And the sun slips below the horizon. We're up early this morning to explore the river. Unlike the Cuyaba River, the Pishaim has bayous and thick vegetation. We stop to listen to the sounds of the river. Hiding in the thick vegetation are some interesting birds. Some have odd features. This tiny kingfisher is only five inches long and weighs less than an ounce. Some birds are foraging along the banks. The kingfishers perch and then swoop down to snatch their meal. The great black hawk is on the lookout for reptiles. The anhinga stabs its prey with its sharp bill. The curassow is in the trees, eating fruit and flowers. Then it's back to the hotel for breakfast. In the courtyard of the hotel, they have a feeding station that attracts very interesting birds. Now it's time for a little exercise, a walk along a trail along the river. In the woodland that borders the river, we see a whole different set of birds than we saw from the boat. Sherry's happy, she found another reptile. After lunch and a siesta, we hit the road again. We stop on a bridge.
and Anhinga is giving us a spear fishing demonstration. And down it goes. We're on the Transpontanero, looking for wildlife. The size of these jabiru nests and chicks is amazing. We have arrived at this afternoon's destination, Fazenda Campo Largo, and more jabiru nests. This one has tenants in the basement, monk parakeets. This ranch is owned by the hotel, and they have activities for their guests here. The ranch house is 100 years old. The sky is looking ominous, and the thunder and lightning have started. We abandoned the truck, also known as the mobile lightning rod, and moved to a pavilion to wait it out. We're between the ranch house and the Pontanero's bunkhouse. The horses don't seem too concerned. The Pontaneros have been fishing, and we watch them clean their catch at Paku, a cousin of the piranha. The sky is still dark, but the sun is trying to break through. It looks like the Pontaneros have finally decided to bring the livestock in. The light's fading, so we hop in the truck and head to a field hoping for an anteater. But all we find are birds. So we call it a day and head back to the hotel for dinner. This morning we are heading home. We leave the Trunce Pontanero behind, try to will anteaters to appear in a likely looking field full of termite mounds wave goodbye to the Pontaneros, drive through the sleepy streets of Picone, and take off from Cuyaba on the first of three flights that will take us home. A special thanks to Wolfgang and Hagina for making this adventure happen, and to Michelle, Ray and Dory, Bob and Nancy for being great traveling companions.